It is officially draft month, so let's start talking draft picks that we have four of. What is up, Finn fans? So every year, uh, and starting in April, I do my top five prospects for each position. I do every single position, regardless if the Dolphins need it or don't need it. This year is different for multiple reasons. One, we have four picks starting in the third round. Uh, so then I thought to myself, well, let me hit up you guys, because I do this for you guys. And was like, do you want me to do every single position? And emphatically about 70% of you guys on both Twitter and here said, nah, just kind of focus on what the needs are of the Dolphins. So that's my thought process. And again, another little change up. I normally rank them, right? Five to one. One being my favorite, five being nah. But being that the Dolphins aren't drafting until the third round pick 102 which essentially is the 49ers compensary pick uh i'm not really gonna rank them i'm gonna tell you what i like and don't like about them and i'm gonna tell you who i like and all that stuff especially when it comes to linebackers but a lot of the guys that i would like bang the table for the dolphins to get like walker we're doing running backs today before I over explain myself, we're doing running backs today. If you, can, you can't tell by the title of the video, I want the Dol you know, Walker is my number one running back. I, had, I would love for the Miami Dolphins to draft Walker. Uh, he ain't making it to the third round. And then even, you know, I wrote down Brees Hall from Iowa State. He ain't making it to the third round. So it's a lot of guys that are later round guys. So. I have some guys I have, you know, positives and negatives. We're going to talk about all that stuff. And I'm going to tell you who my favorites are. But it's not going to be listed. And that's going to be the same with linebackers, center. There's only one punter. Maybe I will talk about him. But we did, before we get into too much, we did sign a punter today. And I'm going to talk about um, maybe corner, tackles. You know, there's still positions that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about. Before we jump into my list of running backs that intrigue me, mid to late round running backs, the Dolphins signed a punter today, Thomas Morstead. Uh, he's a vet. He was with the Saints for a while. Then he was with the Jets for one year. And then he was with the um, Falcons, I think, last year. He's a vet punter. Um, you know, it's 14 years been doing it. Uh, it's a punter. He's not wowing like a Matt Areza, right? Everyone wants Matt Areza. He's booming punts. Now, I've been watching videos of him just completely destroying punts, doing fantastic there. Uh, will the Dolphins double down on punters? I don't know. I don't see Matt Areza going past, what, third, fourth round? He's, he On some people's big board, he's around like 125. So we'll see. Uh, but the Dolphins do go out. They signed a veteran uh, punter. He's been doing it for 14 years. We need better punting, especially last year. A lot of what I've ser seen and heard is the reason for Jason Sanders' fall in his field goaling is because of the horrible holds by Polardi. So we'll see. We'll see how this all pans out. So I just want to real quickly talk about a signing that we did today. So let's jump into these running backs again. They are in no specific order. Um, I'll talk about them, the pros, the cons, what I like about them, what I don't like about them. And we'll go from there. We're going to start with Damian Pierce from Florida. He's 5'10", 215 pounds, right at 4'5", 9". When it compares to the other running backs in the combine, that's a little bit on the slow side. He's built like a tank, right? He, he's kind of like a Frank Gore type, built like a tank, he's low center of gravity. He can really do stop and cut on a dime, really, you know, great. Again, he's built like a tank, so he's got those strong, stumpy legs. Uh, shrug off the first guy. Again, he's that small, tankish guy. Now, will he fit in the Dolphins' scheme with the style that they're running, with all the speed and stuff? Probably not. Uh, again, he's not a home... And here's the cons. He's not really a home run hitter. He's not going... He's not like a... Um, he's not like uh, an Edmonds or, you know, any of the running backs we have where you get him that lane. He's They're gone for 
maybe potentially 67 yard touchdown run. Uh, he gets a little greedy on his cuts and he slips. So a lot of times when he plants that foot and, and tries to make a cut, he'll slip and fall. Uh, he's never had more than 106 carries in a season. So again, he's a, he's projected to be a fourth round guy, uh, Damian Pierce. I don't see the Dolphins really taking him. I do like him as a style of running back. I do like him in a mix with a scat type back, a speedy back, uh, and him, you know, being that third down big back because he is built like a tank, ran a four five nine, like I said. Um, but he's a fourth rounder, right? So if I were to rank him, he'd probably be my number five, uh, especially because he just doesn't. It doesn't seem like he fits the scheme of the Dolphins. Then another one I have here is T- uh, Tyler Al Aguirre. Hope I said his name right. Yeah, BYU. He's five foot eleven, two twenty. Ran a four six, uh, forty. Again, a little bit on the slower side compared to the other running backs. Uh, he's a straight runner. No nonsense. He's not going to try to dance. He's not going to try to make moves in the backfield. He's just going to plant his foot. He's going to run forward. Got great vision. Uh, he's always going towards the hole. He's going to bust it through there. Um, which is great, great pass blocker, finds work and eliminates the threats. So, you you know, he'll probably be a third down back. Uh, he'd probably be my number four just because of, um, again, the same situation where with Damian Pierce where it, he really wouldn't fit the scheme. Here's his cons. It's not He doesn't have great acceleration. Again, he ran a 4.6. Uh, runs like a power back, uh, but he's not considered one in the NFL, especially being, you know, 511 220 um and he ran behind one of the gr- the best run blocking offensive lines at BYU. So again, he's considered a fourth round pick. Um again, he I these are these two guys, Damian Pierce and uh Tyler Algieri are uh considered power backs and that doesn't seem to fit the scheme that the Dolphins are running right now. You should look at the running backs we have. Um, and you, I wouldn't be surprised if Tyreek Hill takes a snap back there or if Lynn Bowden Jr. takes a snap back there. But these are, you know, those types of guys. Th- th- now I'm going to start to get into more of the speedier guys, right? Isaiah Spiller from Texas A&M. He's 6'1", 215, ran a 4'5", 5. A little bit faster than the other two guys. He's got great feet, great jump cut. Um, he's, he's got that little bit of elusiveness to him. I'm on a roll. So when I get on a roll, I talk fast and then I mess up my words. Um, He lost weight. Dropped about 101 pounds. uh, 101 pounds. I wrote 10 pounds, but then I saw the L as a... He dropped 10 pounds. He didn't drop 101 pounds. He wasn't freaking 316 pounds. He dropped 10 pounds after his sophomore year, so he's more elusive. He lost that weight, got a little bit quicker. He's an easy three-down type of running back. He can play all three downs and he can be a pass blocker slash wide receiver style running back out of the backfield i do like isaiah spiller you know his 455 wasn't what people wanted to see out of him coming you know a lot of people had him high and had high hopes for him coming out of texas a&m and then once he ran that 455 it kind of dropped him again he's projected to be a fourth round pick We'll see if that happens. A lot of times uh, when picks start to go, there'll be a run and there'll be reaches. His cons, right? He lacks the long speed, right? Essentially, he's going to get caught. He's going to get caught by these linebackers because he doesn't have that consistent long speed. Again, that's where the 4 5, five came, came in. He dances too much in the backfield. And you guys know how I feel about uh, running backs. You look at Miles Gaskin, who danced too much in the backfield. It kind of drives me nuts. He's on the tall side for a back, and he gets chopped down easily. So, you know, he's six foot one, so he's going to be big. And a lot of times with these backs, you're going to notice, I'll talk, I think there's another guy, they they tend to be too upright in the pocket, kind of get grabbed and brought down. So Isaiah Spiller, again, if I had to rank, he would be my middle of the pack. Um, The speed, again, we'll talk about some other guys, um, but I do like him out of Texas A&M. And again, fourth rounder. Why not? And then uh, another one I have here is Rashad White out of Arizona State, six foot two, so he's taller than Spiller, two hundred ten pounds. He ran a four four eight though, faster. See, uh, easy acceleration out of his cuts, and he'll beat you to the edge. Which you know, running a zone scheme, you know, if we're running to the outsides, that's really going to be beneficial there. Um, great moves, breaks ankles left and right. Um, he's creative in space, which is great, right? He wasn't a returner. 
but he could be six foot two, two ten, running a four four eight. So again, he you get him in space, you, you pitch the ball out, you have that zone run scheme to the outside, which he can use his acceleration to set the edge to get to the outside. You get him in the open space, even if you drop the ball off to him. Kind of seems he fits this style of offense, especially being projected as a fourth round pick, and he can be a, a returner wasn't used as one but again elusive in space and all that stuff maybe this might be the pick in the fourth round depending on what we do in the third round and here's his cons right so run style shows wide receiver playing running back essentially he's not you you wouldn't look at him and say oh that's he's always played running back you see like he's got wide receiver moves in the running back position he's not confident between the tackles again that's why he consistently busts it out to the Busts it out to the side. You know, he looks to go outside a lot more. And so if you hand him off the ball, you tell him hit the B gap or whatever, he's probably, if it's not what he wants, he's probably going to try to shoot it to the outside, maybe at a tackle for a loss. He's a work in progress and pass protection, which then he might be a first or second down type of guy. Um, he, he wants to do it, but he's just not confident in doing it. So again, fourth rounder uh you can pick him up you, you can fit in that backfield with the type of offense we're running and potentially you can find a return guy there and then the final guy i'm going to talk about and this guy actually met with the dolphins i think a few days ago and that's james cook out of georgia he's five foot 11 199 pounds ran a 442 so he's the fastest out of all the running backs i've talked about he's he's fast again ran a 442 he can blaze right past those linebackers. He gets to the top speed quick, and he doesn't lose any of his speed on his cuts, which is very important. He's a natural receiver, one drop out of 68 catchable balls. Again, the reason the Dolphins brought James Cook in is all those things I talked about fit perfectly with the offense that the Dolphins are trying to run here. Here's his cons, right? He's built like a wide receiver. He's light on his lower half, and he struggles to churn. And essentially what that means is you'll notice a lot of times when these big like Duke Johnson, Frank Gore, Derrick Henry, you know, these Marshawn Lynch, these types of running backs where they make contact with the linebacker or they make contact, they're consistently moving their feet and they're trying to push the pile or trying to get off these tackles. That's churning. That's churning their feet and trying to get through it. It's five foot 11, 199 pounds. He's not going to be churning anybody. Um, cut and go, not much, right? Not much wiggle there. He's fast, but he's not going to really dance around, break it too much. And he's a scat back. Georgia uh, made sure he was never in pass protection. So that's why he's, they projected him at a fifth round pick. Dolphins don't have a fifth round pick. So if they want to take him, they'd have to take him in a fourth or probably not get him because then they have two sevenths. So they brought him in. So they might be looking at him. Um, again, he's, his pros fit this style of offense. But when I look at this running back core of guys, right, and again, you have Walker and you have um, Brees, Brees Hall, you know, out of Ohio State. I'll even talk about Brees Hall a little bit. He's considered to be a second round pick, so I don't know if he'll make it to the Dolphins. He's six foot one, two twenty. Ran a four three nine forty. He'd be the fastest one out of my list. Um, he's elusive, hard to bring down, great balance. He gets in and out of awkward positions. Uses used to running behind bad offensive lines, so. You know, if it wasn't for Walker being my one, Brees Hall would be my number two, especially with him being used to running behind bad offensive lines. And he has that great balance where he can get in and out of these tight situations and bust through the lanes. Now, he lacks bursts, to, you know, to make certain cuts and uh, he's low tackle break. He doesn't break many tackles, essentially. Um, and he runs high in between the tackles. And that's a lot of times you're going to get caught if you're running high. And he doesn't drive through defenders. Um but running a 4-3-9 and running behind a bad offensive line and his elusiveness and all that stuff, he would be my number two. If I were to give you a 1-5 to five situation, it would be Walker 1, Hall 2, uh, Spiller 3, I think White 4, and I think 5, I'd give you uh, James Cook. That would be my list of guys. And then you have Damian Priest and Tyler uh, Aguirre, which, again, those guys are, you know, those those tank type of backs, but I don't think that fits the system. But those are my five. You take Brees Hall out, my five are Damian Pierce, uh, Aguirre, Spiller, White, and Cook um, are potential guys, but mostly Spiller, White, and Cook would be guys that the Dolphins are probably looking at third, fourth round. 
And again, they don't have a fifth or a sixth. So that's that's where you're you're looking there. And that's where my predicament comes in because I want to talk about the best guys in this draft, right? That's I want to give you the top prospects in this draft. Um but there's no point because we're not going to have a chance to get them. Um because that's what that's what you're looking at when it comes to running backs and you're looking at the um the top guys, Kenneth Walker, Brees Hall, um all those types of guys are the top guys. And then especially, you know, when we get to linebacker, I'll talk about the top guys and where they might end up, but I'll talk about kind of where we are picking. But comment below, let me know what you think of the running backs I talked about. If I missed any that you think could be really good in our trajectory of third, fourth round, comment below, let me know. If you guys want to take a running back in those rounds, comment below, let me know. But other than that, guys, I will see you Monday with the next video. I think Monday I'll start, uh, we'll do centers. Centers or tackles, because we I still would like to take a tackle potentially compete with that right tackle position with um, Eichenberg and Austin Jackson. We're still going to talk about centers because we haven't done anything at center. So be sure to comment below. But other than that, guys, I'll see you Monday. Unless news breaks, then you'll get a video. But like usual, stay classy. Events up.